Congressional leaders unveiled a $1.2 trillion spending package overnight, a day before a potential government shutdown. Leaders of both parties signaled optimism about the plan, which would fund key parts of the government through fiscal year 2024. Kinks over funding the Department of Homeland Security were ironed out, and if passed, the plan will not only fund the Department of Homeland Security, but also the Departments of Defense, Labor, Health and Human Services, Education and State. After four short-term budgets known as continuing resolutions, this package could wrap up months of kicking the proverbial can down the road. At least until next fiscal year, here to discuss what's in the bill and the looming shutdown is congressional reporter for The Hill, Michael Schnell. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, guys. Good morning. So where do we stand? I see a lot of unhappy Republicans, your Matt Gaetzes, your Chip Roy's, saying that the speaker ought to have gotten more, not that he could have possibly gotten everything they want, but that this um, deal is not, is not what conservatives want. Yeah, conservatives are frustrated by this deal, but guys, that's no surprise here, right? We have seen hardliners, members of the right flank, voice opposition to the spending and government funding at every turn of this shutdown showdown, what it's been over the past five and a half months. Remember, we're five and a half months into fiscal year 2024, and we're still hashing out funding for the year. So it's no surprise that conservatives were angry about this, saying that it doesn't cut spending enough, um, railing at the fact that it doesn't include enough of their controversial policy riders. But look, at the end of the day, guys, we are in divided government where Democrats control the Senate and the White House, not to mention the Senate has that 60 vote filibuster. So you need to anything that's going to pass the Senate is going to have to be bipartisan in nature. Speaker Mike Johnson ultimately recognized that those were the current dynamics in Washington. And he worked with Democrats in both chambers to cut this spending deal in addition to President Biden at the White House. And now we're going to see a vote in the coming days to avert that partial government shutdown on Friday. There could be a short shutdown to depending on when the vote happens and when things shake out. Uh, but we will officially put a close on fiscal year 2024 government funding. And guys, fiscal year 2025 is just around the corner. So be ready for maybe a short pause in government funding conversations for a little bit. But that's expected to pick up very soon after. Michael, I want to come back to this idea of why Republicans are upset. I mean, I think your point is completely accurate. There should be some expectation that there's going to have to be bipartisanship to get anything done in a divided Congress. But at least some Republicans, the Freedom Caucus, have ousted a, a, a Speaker of the House for less. Specifically, Matt Gates went on a CNN yesterday and when asked specifically how he feels about Mike Johnson's actions here, he says, I would have hoped for more, and frankly, I think he would have as well. When I think about how Mike Johnson campaigned for the job of Speaker, he sounded a lot more like I do. Do you think that he is worried about being the target of another one of these Speaker roundtable dances that the Republicans have been engaged with for about a year now? I mean, Johnson was actually actually asked about, the, about that this morning during an interview on CNBC Squawk Box. And he essentially said he's not concerned about a potential uh, challenge to his gavel. And I think that's pretty much the right uh, analysis there. Because look, House Republicans ousted Speaker Kevin McCarthy back in October, and it plummeted, it plummeted House Republicans into this three weeks of chaos. They cycled through four different candidates to finally be able to land on Mike Johnson. They weren't able to do business on the floor, legislative business on the House floor, as Israel was just entering this war against Hamas. So it really wasn't a good look for House Republicans, and they came out of that pretty bruised. And so now the general consensus is, is that, you know, conservatives may say that they, they don't like Speaker Speaker Mike Johnson, but behind the scenes, folks are saying that they can't really do this again, right? It would be very harmful if they did it again for two reasons. A, we'd have that chaos uh, for actually more than two reasons. A, we'd have that chaos again, just like we saw in October. This time, though, months before the November elections, when Republicans are trying to expand their majority in the House. B, who would be the next speaker, guys? Remember, we cycled through, like I said, four candidates back in October with people from the left and the right wings of the party brushing away at various candidates. I mean, who would be the next candidate? That's an open question. And C, we've seen a number of Democrats say in recent months that they would come in and protect Mike Johnson for you know various reasons. A, if he moves on Ukraine aid, if he keeps the government open, whatever that may be. I think that if we were to see a challenge to Mike Johnson's gavel, there'd be a real consideration among Democrats to sweep in and save him. And also, I'll just note, guys, I've spoken to a number of conservatives, House conservatives, in recent weeks through every twist and turn of this spending battle. And I've said, you know, really, the only point of leverage you have left in this spending fight is a motion to vacate. Are you going to do it? But everyone has consistently said we are just simply not there right now. 
Sure. I mean, it, frankly, it seems like the big advantage Mike Johnson has over Kevin McCarthy is is that he's like better liked on a personality level. I mean, some of this, I think, is just personality. And also, as you say, Donald Trump is the real leader of the Republican Party, and he does not want any such drama, chaos, etc., uh, given that he looks like he's in very decent shape to potentially win the election. Uh, I don't know that a that a new speaker kind of that sort of drama again would actually matter that much, but their feeling is probably, is it a why rock the boat kind of sentiment? Yeah, I mean, it's, it is the presidential, that's a consideration, but let's also talk about these down ballot races, right? When you talk about, especially the House, all lawmakers are up for re-election in the House. That's how it works. Terms are just two years. So Republicans want to go on the campaign trail and say to their voters and their constituents, hey, look, I did A, B, and C when you gave me the majority, and this is reason one, two, and three why I deserve to continue to be in the majority. And hey, give me a bigger majority and I can get more done. Well, House Republicans don't have that much to speak for. Sure, they passed H.R. 1 and H.R. 2, their sweeping energy policy bill and their border bill. None of those, neither of those went far in the Senate. Right now, Republicans are struggling through their impeachment inquiry of President Biden. There are open questions on where that will land and a real skepticism that we'll ever see articles of impeachment against the president. And then, I mean, we did see the impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas in the House. It only happened on the second try, and it's not going anywhere in the Senate. So if you throw in then a another speaker conundrum and another three weeks of stalemate in the House, that's not going to help Republicans when they go back home to their districts and hey, say, hey, this is what I did for you. And this is why you should you know, vote for me again and keep and expand the Republican majority. So, you know, of course, the presidential is always a consideration, but Republicans in the House particularly are also mainly looking at expanding their majority because they say, you know, the Senate map looks very good right now for Republicans. If, pres if former President Trump is able to return to the White House and if Republicans can expand their majority or at the least keep it, they'd have that uh, that trifecta, what it's called, in Washington, and they can do a lot of policy in the, over the next two years. Michael, Democrats are claiming some wins and increases to spending on federal child care uh, and education programs. There also, however, is in this agreement, an agreement to cut permanently this uh, UNRWA funding through 2025. What has the uh, response from the left flank, specifically the members of the squad and others who have been more vocal about humanitarian abuses in Gaza, been to this part of the bill? Yeah, we are still looking to hear reaction to this legislation. Remember, the text dropped in the middle of the night just before 3 a.m. this morning. So lawmakers are still parsing through the details. Um, but that is expected to be a hotly contested provision in the bill, especially for lawmaker for Democrats on the left. But I will note, I mean, as what commonly happens with a lot of these spending bills is typically you'll lose, you know, the members of the very, very left and the members of the very, very right. And what gets it over the finish line is that hodgepodge coalition of members in the middle of both parties. So even if some progressives peel off because they don't like that UNRWA provision, and even if some conservatives peel off because they don't think that the cuts are enough and the policy riders are enough, this is still likely to sail through even with that two-thirds threshold needed for suspension of the rules because you have that middle um, middle of both parties. But of course, you know, the UNRWA uh, provision and other things like that could raise questions about President Biden standing among progressives when you talk about no November and then some progressive challengers in some of these races across the country. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, thank you for that update. We really appreciate it, Michael. Thanks, guys.